With the recession that's upon us, we think that it is going to be a game changer for the American people and for the world in general. And the reason why we say this is because with every recession, there is a transfer of wealth that happens. And those who have prepared for it just hit the lottery. My name is Carmen. And I'm Darius. And today we're going to do things a little different because we're actually going to interview our each other. Yeah. And what's different about that is we prepared a few questions that we're just going to get each other's opinion about when in, in regards to this upcoming recession. Mm -hmm. And the economy in general. And side note, we don't know what we're going to ask each other, so it's going to be a little juicy to see how this works out. So I'm going to keep it easy for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's get started. <laughs> you keep it easy for me. <laughs> okay. I'm going to make it hard for you then. Oh, you want to go first? Sure. So my first question for you, Carmen, is what is your biggest takeaway from the start of this recession? It's a good one. I like that. I would say, for, I'm answering personally, for, if that's okay. I'd say my biggest takeaway is to have your finances in order. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, I, I laugh, but I mean that really seriously is because with everything that's going on with COVID, with the recession, with the markets, we have never been in a better financial position right because i say last one we were still in well i was still in college in 2008 <laughs> we were still just trying to figure it out and, right. and now that we have our ducks in a row it is the most empowering feeling to know that we have money coming in that we have money saved that we have opportunities that we are still able to make money that we're we understand how to monetize our knowledge that we we are not reliant on the government we're not dependent on the government for our lifestyle you know because with the last recession we were completely dependent on the government for our lifestyle and there's so many families that are going through financial hardships because of their dependencies and the takeaway that i have is just knowledge is power and you better get educated and start trying to figure out how you can better yourself financially because ain't nobody gonna do it for you. And we even know like with our own family members, you know, some of them, you know, that they, they could have issues with, with their jobs. They may be struggling financially, but I am sleeping easy at night because I know that we're okay. Yeah, uh, and knowledge is the potential of power because we have an unlimited unlimited source of knowledge through the World Wide Web, but how we utilize the education that we have as it relates to it is how we apply the knowledge that we actually have. So it's the potential How you of power. apply the knowledge is the key, absolutely. Pats on our backs for applying our knowledge because it feels good right now. <laughs> All right, so your question, sir, did I answer your question? You did answer my question. All right, great. All right, so your question is, uh, Darius, can you please put a reset, define a recession in your opinion? A recession is six consecutive months of a down economy. Mm -hmm. That's simply what it is. Whenever you have a six consecutive months, you are considered to be in a recession because there's no upward mobility as it relates to the growth of the economy. Mm -hmm. What we've had since uh, 2008, or after our 2008 recession is we were having consistent growth every single year and on average a recession happens every uh, about four to five years um give or take uh, since uh 1900s every four <laughs> four to five years history repeats itself but what's different about this recession is the fact that it went so long since the last one and I'm not exactly sure it hasn't happened in my lifetime where I can look back at history and see what to what to expect yeah. because the landscape has changed significantly since uh, the Great Depression um, as far as us being connected to other c uh, countries through logistics through online businesses totally we even have online companies that we work with mm -hmm. so it's just different to see how things are going to be during this recession yeah. And I think if anything, with everyone having to work from home and th th this is just a completely different landscape that no one has ever really been in. And with the digital age, this recession, well, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, are, are we going to be able to take full advantage of it or is it going to be something that breaks us? Well, recessions are supposed to break people. It's, it's kind of like a way of uh, cleansing. At least that's what I was taught. It's a way of cleansing, of getting the weaker businesses out of there and the strong survive. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate, but it's, it's kind of like a way of cleansing. At least that's what I was taught. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, with anything, with, with, with 
all bad, there is some good that comes to it. And if anything, for those of us who are maybe struggling financially, this is your opportunity to start understanding what you need to do to make sure that you're prepared for the next recession. So Carmen, my next question for you is, after this recession, do you think you'll be in a better financial position moving forward or not? Much better, much better. <laughs> much better like and again the reason being is because the knowledge that i currently possess and understanding investing and understanding money and how money works and how to flip money i didn't understand any of that in the last recession and so understanding that i know that everything's about to be on sale and mama's gonna go shopping <laughs> yeah and and i can agree with you because when we first started our entrepreneurial journey we were in business and this was like on a tail end yeah. of the 2008 recession where we got into real estate because there wasn't a lot of people in it yeah and then after a while everybody in their mom felt like they could be a real estate investor which inflated the prices of how much we were buying houses for yeah. so we kind of took a step back and i think now once things kind of happen whatever happens happens we'll be in a position to where we're able to react or act on opportunities that presents itself because we have access to cash yeah exactly and gone are the days where we're trigger shy we've missed opportunities being trigger shy you know that those days are gone because again, you miss every shot that you don't take you miss every shot that you don't take so i'm excited for the opportunities that come because i just know that and when i meant everything is on sale you know uh real estate housing investments you know that that affects the cost of everything and so it's almost like going to costco just gonna go buy in bulk because uh you have the opportunity to do so but again I, i'm not saying this to be to be braggadocious or anything i'm just i'm so proud of where we are financially that i never even knew that we could be on the side of this recession and being able to say that we can create opportunity from this it, it's such a liberating moment for me in this just in this interview to, to just kind of have this reflected upon of the the opportunities that you can create once you Get, get your stuff together. Yeah, I think it's almost like the slingshot effect where you have to be pulled all the way back or really down in order to get that full upward momentum to position yourself. And I think that's what we've done. We've been yeah. in pretty bad situations financially mm -hmm. where we're able to see how whenever you do things a certain way, you get certain results. Yeah. Now we know we can connect our, our actions to our results. Now we're on the opposite end of that trying to make sure that we teach you guys and our clients how to not make the same mistakes that we have mm -hmm. in the past. Learn from our mistakes, absolutely. All right, so Mr. Britt, your next question is, how much weight do you put in the government as far as how the government affects your finances? Me personally, I don't think the government affects my finances at, at all, because even when it comes to the fact that we're paying the IRS, I mean, everything can be Think on it, think yeah. on it, think on it, take, take a minute. So I don't think- It that, was a loaded question. Yeah, I know, I know, you're trying to get me to, I don't think the government affects our, our finances at all. Okay. And the, the, the reason why I say that from, from my viewpoint is the fact that we create our uh, own finances because it's the knowledge that we have in which we use to create money. Mm -hmm. It's not the fact that we have to go to uh, depend on somebody else to create the, the funds for us. We yeah. create the funds based on the knowledge that we've had and the experiences that we've um, had in our, our, our lives to create the, the lifestyle that we want. Mm -hmm. So, but, but expound on that because somebody could say, well, the elections and the president and, and, and your governor and whatnot, you know, that they're always affecting your life. I think it's more of, for me, entertainment, because you can look at the stuff that people say and you can look at the stuff that the people do and the laws that are being changed and you can use it in your favor mm -hmm. because things are a certain way for a reason. And it's the reason is, is to help someone be put in a, a better financial position. I think it's, it's not everything for everybody, is, not for everybody, but for the people that those laws are being put in place for is for the benefit of somebody, maybe a small group, but it's for the benefit of somebody. So if you're able to look at the different things that go on around you and read between the lines, then you're able to uh, maneuver and put yourself in a better position. Like for instance, right now, a lot of people are using online to 
uh, transfer information amongst each other versus the face-to-face -face thing. Microsoft saw a 70% increase in Skype uh, because of what's happening now. Mm -hmm. So there's things that happen all around us that we can benefit from if we just know the right position and the hidden messages that is being uh, communicated to us. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. And I, I asked that question because with what's going on in the economy, a lot of people are just saying, oh, well, you, they're blaming the president or they're blaming everybody and, and their mom. But really when it comes down to it is the law, there are laws that are in place, but you making money has nothing to do with, you know, whatever the government laws and, and things are being upheld. So it's all about creating your own economy and owning your own lifestyle, owning your economy so that when things like this happen, you're not as affected by it. Right. And if you are in a business where it stopped as a result, then you have to get creative and figure out a different avenue. You can't go down that road, mm -hmm. then you have to choose a different one. Yeah. There's always a different role or different choice that we can make to put Pivots. ourselves in a we can better pivot. position. Yeah. yeah, because even with our own business, this the economy has brought something up where we can pivot and do something else in addition to a lot of the things that we talk about. So it's keep, keeping, keeping your options open and, and being knowledgeable and really understanding how to monetize, monetize, monetize. Yeah, infinite banking in it yeah that's not everything mm -hmm. that's just one piece of it yeah so my question for you Carmen is do you think the stock market is manipulated that's a juicy question okay how do I put this <laughs> the market can be manipulated yes but more so what I think is manipulated is the 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 marketing and the messaging around investing and the market itself so to, to, to break that down a little bit more, what I mean is, uh, for example, the average rate of return versus the actual rate of return. Um, I can't tell you how many times people tell me, oh, you know, I average 20%. It's like, yeah, that's great, but what are you actually making? Because the average has nothing to do with the money that you actually have in your account. Um, what could be coming in or out? So I think that when they're talking about marketing and the messaging that relates around the market is really influential, really, how about just inaccurate? We're just gonna go there. I think it's just inaccurate. And I think that it preys on a lot of people who are ill-equipped to really deal with the market uh, because you see time and time again, people continue to lose their life savings, their retirements and everything because they were guaranteed certain returns that just weren't the case. And the, Were they guaranteed or did they just not read the contract? It's all about that manipulation, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, the, the market can totally be manipulated. Um, but if anything, I think understanding that, but then going back to understanding how it actually works in the first place. Like don't just take everything for face value because you have to understand how the game works. And for those of you who are just into it because you think you're gonna sim be, get a simple return and you're dependent on your broker to manage your money for you, you've already lost the game. Yeah, and when it comes to, I'm glad you mentioned game because like the stock market was originally created for, the, it was used for a different purpose than what we use it now. The 401ks and retirement accounts were used for a certain purpose than what we're utilizing it for now. Uh, pensions were there for a certain reason and it's not there now because of the way just things work when it comes to money. Yeah. Whenever you introduce money to something, you get people, uh, whenever you introduce money to something in a capitalist society, you, you don't always get the best results. Yeah. You get whoever has the best marketing. Yeah. It <laughs> Yes, you do. I'm, that was that was a good one. I like that. We have a lot of subscribers who are gung ho uh, investors in the market, and I'm not bashing the market. I just want to be real because people need to understand how the market works. And if you have no idea how the market works, and you're dependent again on a broker or someone else to invest your funds, you've already lost. You need to understand what you're investing in. What are your returns? You know wh wh what's going on. And if you can't even have a conversation about that then you have no business being in the in the stock market. And you, I think the key is understanding the difference between uh, saving and investing. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, yeah, your yeah. 401k isn't a savings account because if it was a savings account, then you wouldn't be at risk of losing your money. <laughs> How about them apples? It's, a, it's an investment. Hmm. So make sure that you have a good foundation of savings before you move on into investing. Investing should be done um, after you have money. 
Yes. Because if you invest and lose all your money and you don't have anything in saving, what are you going to do then? That's not savings. That's yeah. not savings. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So understanding the difference between the two, you can have a financial advisor. Make sure you work with that financial advisor as long as you have a good foundation of savings and you have money that you uh, can afford to lose. Mm -hmm. I actually disagree. I don't think you should have a financial advisor because it's a crutch. Yeah, it's a crutch, but some people like giving their money up to other people. <laughs> exactly. But not you, Wealth Nation. You better <laughs> handle your own money. And if you have a financial advisor, again, not hating on anybody, but it's a crutch. You're relying on somebody else to manage your money for you. Yeah. Like if, if you get policies from us, we are never going to handle your money for you. And we never tell you that we're going to because it's your bank. You got to control it. And we're just here to provide the education so that you can understand how to control it. And and if you have somebody that's managing your fund, I don't, I'm sorry, soapbox. Well, let me get off that soapbox. Manage your own stuff. Yeah. Because and nobody's going to care about your money more than you. And we love you financial advisors also because we work with you in a different business. <laughs> yeah. And we really appreciate what you do for us <laughs> and the society as a whole. Well, I sure shut that down, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Darius, your last question, sir, is what is the difference between 2008 and the current bailouts that we're going through? Well, there is... A I think there's a difference in the marketing because the companies that were bailed out in the past, they may not be the exact same companies, but let's take a look at our, our airlines, for example, or you know what, let's take a look at the banks. The banks don't get it in 2008. The banks got a direct bailout from um, us, yeah. the taxpayers. Now they're getting, they're not getting a direct bailout because we can't say, oh, the banks didn't learn their lesson from 2008. But what's happening is the Federal Reserve is buying all their bad debt. So that kind of sounds like a bailout to me, but just with a different spin on it. Mm -hmm. And when the Federal Reserve is buying it, they're just printing money. Yeah. So isn't that exactly what a bailout is? They get a blank check and, well, not a blank check. They get a check to, you know, make it put themselves in a better position because of all the bad mis financial mistakes that they made. I think there isn't really a difference. There's a difference in the marketing, but not a difference in the the result of what's going on. Right. Because let's let's think let's think about the uh, the the travel industry. Airlines and hotels were hit really hard. Now, we have a airline company that recently uh, a few months before the whole pandemic hit they invested all their savings into uh, their stocks mm. so that they can, you know, look to the shareholders and be like, you know, we created we're doing this, good. we're doing good. But then a few months later, they require the same amount of money that they took out of their savings and uh, put into their stocks. They get the same amount in bailout. So these large companies don't even have savings to where, you know, you go uh, a week and you're almost bankrupt. Yeah. They don't have good financial practices and thanks to the government, they don't have to because they're always going to get bailed out. I was going to say that they don't have to. So long story. And we get $2,400. <laughs> I'm sorry. My accent came out. <laughs> we got $2,400. <laughs> that just sounds funny. Um, so long story short, really there's no difference. The bailout is a bailout is a bailout and a lot of these government, or not necessarily the government, but a lot, of, a lot of these large corporations don't have to practice sound financial measures because they're just going to be bailed out. Right. So that's all the questions I have for you. <clears throat> well, that was fun. That was fun. Let us know in the comment section if you want us to do uh, this again or even leave us some questions that maybe we can do on our next video where we interview our, ourselves again. Yeah, exactly. So again, this was just our opinion. Do not take it as Bible. Just take it with a grain of salt. We just wanted to have a moment to vent about what's going on because we know we're all stir crazy being cooped up in our houses. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you guys again for your time. And if you have any questions or are trying to learn the money game, then absolutely click on the link below to watch our masterclass so that you can learn the infinite banking concept and become your own source of financing and take control of your own economy. Right. And if you want to learn even more information about infinite banking, check out our next video where we talk about becoming your own bank. Exactly. And remember to own your own lifestyle or someone else will.